Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Starship webinar. We appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to take a look at Starship and the LTL capabilities. We're going to take you through a brief PowerPoint and then jump into the product demo. And if there, there's time at the end of the presentation, we'll open it up to some questions. So what are some of the reasons to consider adding LTL to your Starship license? Traditionally, Starship started out as a parcel product uh, with all the major small package carriers. And about 10 years ago, we began building out the software to support freight and LTL type shipments. Um, with that, it gives you visibility to all of your different uh, shipping service options from a single user interface, one repository of data for all of your history. Uh, you'll have the exact same workflow between both parcel and freight mode to over 20 different LTL options. With that, you'll have real-time access to your negotiated rates, so we'll be able to retrieve tariffs and discounts directly from the carrier web services. That also eliminates the need to have to maintain books of pro numbers and scanning them in locally. You'll be able to retrieve the tracking directly from those carriers that support pro numbers. Many of the carriers also offer electronic tendering and the ability to schedule pickups, so you'll no longer have to visit their website or give a call to the dispatch in order to have the truck come by. With the Macola integration, we're able to pull the line item information out of the ERP and link that up with the NMFC code and freight class, all of the related information that needs to populate on the bill of lading. With the bills of lading, we can retrieve copies directly from the carriers, so we can get PDFs from the carriers to print in their format, or Starship has customizable straight and VIX bills of lading built in. With the dashboard, you'll have access to some reporting tools and analytics to give a little more insight into your shipping activity, see what your freight spend is over a period of time. We can also automate the carrier rate shopping and service selection by enforcing your business rules, we can select the ship via automatically. So actually can also tie in closely with your EDI and WMS applications. So you can kind of pick and pack and do the fulfillment uh, outside of Starship, push that data in. So we have a more tightly integrated solution and then also hand off all that data to your trading partners. And finally, the email ship notifications would behave the same way as, as we do for UPS or FedEx, where you're able to proactively notify your customers of everything that's going out the door, giving them a packing list, the breakdown of the shipment um, with the pro number and a link to start tracking that on their own. You can also include copies of any of the documents that you print out of Starship. So the bill of lading could also be inserted as an attachment. This next slide here, you'll see some uh, hopefully familiar logos to you, all the various carriers that we currently have available to Starship. And that list is always evolving and expanding over time. What we have coming up next for you in the next release is a module for Worldwide Express. They are a national 3PL uh, logistics provider that uh, will give you access to multiple carriers LTL rates. They can act as a broker on your behalf and negotiate with the carriers for you. Uh, phase two as part of that module will also be rolling in rates from Unishippers, another national 3PL. So you'll have essentially two for one with the broker rates uh, as part of that solution. We're also building out a module for New England Motor Freight, which is a regional carrier in the Northeast. On the horizon for 2019 is also Echo Logistics, another uh, 3PL provider that we're working with to build out the integration. There are other 3PLs and regional carriers on our radar. If you don't see the ones that you're currently using on the list here, feel free to reach out to your account rep and we'll be sure to log your request. With Starship, you have both the VIX and straight bill of lading that'll populate with all of the McCullough order data um, to 
help you know speed up that process. You'll no longer have to go into a separate application or go to a carrier website, open up a form in Crystal or Word. Uh, you'll get that generated right as you're processing the shipment and it'll spit out automatically multiple copies as well. Uh, rate shopping, you'll have access to that in both the front office and at the point that you're shipping. This can be used to make a determination on how you want to get the product out the door, what's the most cost effective, or uh, if speed is more of an issue, you'll be able to sort on the transit time. Email notification, uh, again, similar to what you're doing with parcels, you'll be able to notify your customer uh, automatically with customized email notifications based on the audience who you're sending it to. That can include any of the Macola data in the body of the email as reference fields. It also enables you to build some brand awareness by embedding your logo. You have control over the color scheme. You could also have links back into your shopping cart or your website. So with that, we're going to jump over to the product demo. And with Starship, the workflow is essentially the same between parcel and freight mode. Here in freight mode, you have access to all your various common carriers here. Uh, it will pull the ship via code directly out of Macola, and by default, that's what it's going to look at to select the carrier and service level. You can also automate some of the uh, accessorials by linking fields uh, in Macola. You have a number of extra fields in the customer maintenance area where you could flag things like lift gate, inside delivery, white glove service. I'll show you in a little bit how you can link those. The order ID is essentially what you're going to enter into the system. You can type that in, you can scan it in if you have a barcode on your pick sheet, or you can do a look up here on the spyglass. That enables you to sort on all the pending transactions. You have control over the view here by which columns are displayed in the view, the order of appearance, as well as the ability to apply filters if you want to drill down into a subset of data. We'll go ahead and type in our first order here and get started on the shipping process. Starship's going to fill in with all the order data here on the left-hand side of the screen, essentially your order header information, uh, the company you're connected to, the order. You'll see the ship via code here translated from the order. You can always change that here on the fly. Billing preference, you also have the ability to bill things collect or third party if your customer's providing their billing information. You can assign the charges to a specific account. A return address, recipient, all that information is going to flow through from the McCola order. Down here at the bottom, you'll see the packaging detail. Uh, Starship has the ability to also build out case pack logic around your line items so we can uh, kind of automate the packaging process for either LTL or parcel. And the main difference is you're palletizing your goods. So you're, you have two layers of packaging items and boxes, boxes that go on pallets. If you need to add packages or pallets, you have that access here. Add a package, add a pallet. You can also do aggregate packaging where you can just tell Starship the total number of pieces. So you can put in that here for the boxes or at the pallet level. Starship also offers a shipping assistant where you can click on the magic wand here, or you can have that pop up as soon as you scan in the first order. What that enables you to do is group multiple sales transactions uh, going to the same address. And that's useful if you're shipping to say a DC um, or you have a uh, you know, multiple pending transactions uh, that are all going to the same customer and you have some items on back order that you want to consolidate with the current PO that you've just received. So Starship's going to look through the Macola database. It'll match on anything going to the same address. So you could potentially take these orders and move them into the same transaction together to ship them. And we'll update all of those on the right back into Macola as well. There's also a manual look up here. You can click on the spyglass and you can manually select any orders that you want to group. We'll just go ahead and ship this one transaction. 
membership also gives you access to rate shopping. So you can click on the dollar sign here. You come over to the rate shop tab and it'll give you access to any of the carrier rates that you'll see on your system here, whichever modules you have. These are also color coded. So your uh, contract freight here, you'll see that show up here in purple or pink. Any of the 3PL rates that you have enabled, you'll see those here in blue. From here, you can see that it's sorted by the least expensive down to the most expensive. You can also sort on transit time. Or if you have a date certain delivery, you know it's got to be there on a certain day by a certain time. You can enter that information here or map that over from Macola, and Starship will filter out any of those services that can't make that transit time for you. We'll go ahead and stick with the Old Dominion that came over from Macola. I'll process this now. With that, that'll print out our bill of lading, our package and pallet labels, packing list, uh, 128 labels if it's an EDI type shipment, and then all that data will flow back into McCullough so we have it there for customer service. We'll take a look back here in McCullough at that order. We can insert the records into both the order header comments or the first line item comments, that's your preference. And you have control over the content of the notes. We give you some default information out of the box. It'll tell you when it went out, um, the bill of lading number. You can create that as well. The data was shipped, when you can expect it to be delivered by, how it was billed, the number of pieces, the weights, and then of course your pro number, so you have that for tracking purposes. reopen that here. Billing information, we can take the freight and put it directly onto the order. Or if you have the manifest feature enabled in your system setup in Macola, we can insert those records here. So it'll also put a copy of the tracking or the pro number into this table. And then you can capture your freight here. Manifest select gives you the ability to multi-select uh, several orders. And while you're doing your select for billing, override the order freight with the manifest freight. So let's take a look a little bit closer underneath the hood here in Starship at some of the configuration and setup. I mentioned the tight item integration available between McCola and Starship. So open up one of our items here. And Starship will basically create item records for any parts that you ship. Um, we can import those in in a batch or Starship will learn over time uh, the behavior of how you ship those products and any of the uh, ways that you classify those products and store that information in our tables for future use. So you have your basic uh, ERP data here, item number, unit of measure, description, weight, and value. Uh, here's the packaging scenarios here where you can define the quantity of a particular item, type of box that it goes into. When we're shipping freight, you have the NMFC code and description that's used to populate uh, the data on the bill of lading. Freight class, that's how your LTL company is going to uh, price that out. And then you have the group, which is something kind of unique to Starship, basically a generic product category that you can assign multiple line items to. So rather than print each and every McCullough part number on your bill of lading, you can assign each of those products to a group that's a system preference that you can set up on how you want the information organized on your bill of lading. So we'll take a look at those preferences here. So you have your item classification, your default type of bill of lading, and then how you want to group those items by NMFC class, item number, or group name if you want to use those generic product categories. You also have that ability here to create the bill of lading number. You can map over, call the order data, PO number, 
um, any information that you want to populate the bill of lading number, or Starship has a unique algorithm that can assign that uh, bill of lading number sequentially as you're processing shipments. So that's just another way that you can kind of cross-reference the shipments um, in the carrier's tracking system in case you don't have a pro number. You can turn on that shipping assistant if you want to assemble multiple orders into one shipment to get that pop up automatically. Some preferences here on how to deal with the shipment processing, how to pack things out if you want to use the packaging that's built into Starship natively. And then I mentioned the accessorial charges, any of those special services here. We're going to take a look at the interface to show you where you can link that information. So you're going to go into setup, customize interface, and look at your Macola orders. And here you have on the left-hand side, this tree view with all of the tabs inside of Starship. In the center column, you have all the various fields that are exposed on those tabs. So the ones you see here highlighted in green are connected to a data source. And you look over to the right, it's pulling from a cola. And you have the ability to pull any of those fields here in the dropdown. Now we can expand that list as well. Starship offers a SQL extension, so we can connect into other areas of Macola or even other databases. So we can read and write to really any data source on the network that way. So things like uh, your carrier and service, we're pointed at the ship via code. We do a value translation on that. And we'll automatically pull over, you know, whichever types of carriers that you have set up in Macola and link that to the corresponding service on the Starship side. So basically the same sort of setup that you're doing with Parcel. Things like the special services, you have any of those here. So let's say you wanted to set up a lift gate uh, for one of your customers. You know that that's an additional fee that you're going to have to incur when delivering to them. You can set that up here and point that to one of the customer user-defined fields or extra fields that live inside the Macola database. We've got a whole bunch of options here. So the more information that Starship understands about your customer's address, how to handle the shipment, less clicks uh, that the shipper has to worry about. So you want to try to set up as much of that stuff about your items, about your, uh, your customer as you can in Macola, and then have Starship just read those flags directly in. On the notes, you also have some capabilities here. Uh, so you have both uh, parcel and freight information. So you can have different types of information right back for your LTL type shipments. Here's a standard text that we showed you earlier. You can go in and look at all the various fields that are available on the right back and configure that exactly how you want the information to show up. For carriers that uh, you might not see on the list, um, you can easily add carriers to Starship with the bill of lading module. We have all the various SCAT codes for carriers that we know we've set up in the past. Uh, we can you know, just click on the add carrier icon here. That'll bring up a record where you can create your own custom carrier. And you can also set up all of your distributors trucks in there as well. So if you have customers that are coming to pick up their own goods, put in the carrier, the SCAT code, type of service that it is. And then we set it up for manual processing, meaning that it's not going to look to an external API to get a rate or to book the truck. It's just paper-based inside of Starship. So you can really add any kind of carriers that way. Uh, you also have the ability to add your three PLs here as well. So under the maintain menu, you can add your three PLs and then you can put any carriers that you want to use under that three PL here. Their information will show up on the bill of lading. Bills of lading, you have uh, a number of different options. Uh, you have the straight bill of lading that's built into Starship. That can be customized as well as the VIX bill of lading. And then each of the carriers that we ship with, you have the ability to retrieve their versions of those documents, and then Starship just fills in the information. If you're looking to customize that, 
Uh, you can kind of tweak the information and the way that it's displayed here by modifying any of the templates that are built into Starship. If you go into your printing menu, any of those that are built in here you can open up the standard forms and then modify how those are displayed. So here is the finished result. This is what's underneath the form. You have all these objects over here on the left-hand side that you can drag and drop onto the page to customize that. Graphics and logos, you can draw on the page. Barcodes, so any data inside of Starship can be barcoded and displayed on the document. Bands of text, where you see fields of data line up here in columns, individual fields, and blocks of text. So you can take any of the standard information that we have here, remove that, put your own info there, or free up some more real estate on the page. Once you get this set up the way you like, do a save as here, you give that a unique name, and that's another template that you can then produce out of Starship. With the documents, uh, we can save any of those to PDF. Uh, so those can be saved into an external directory or you can then pull them up if you don't have access to Starship itself. Copies of those will be saved here on the network. Multiple copies can be produced. You can have the preview pop up or you can have them printed out automatically. You define what carriers you want to um, assign the document to, and then you have rules here at the bottom where you can link this to a particular item, customer, uh, certain carrier, whatever the case may be, you can put in logic here that will trigger the printing of that particular document. Once the document's PDF, then you can include those in the email notifications that go out to your customers. Starship offers eNotify here. We have some built-in templates, so you can customize these with your own branding, uh, colors, links, logos. And here you can have a static file that's pulled in and attached to the email, or you can also pull those dynamically from any of the documents that Starship prepares. So hopefully if your customers are checking their email, you're being proactive about notifying them, that cuts down on the number of customer service calls you receive. We're going to, of course, put that detail back into McCullough so you have it there. You also have access to the dashboard. This is where you can do lookups on any of the McCullough fields that are coming through as a way to cross-reference the shipment and find what you're looking for, order, invoice number, customer ID, PO, any of the address fields can be used to search the data and find the transaction that you're looking for. You have access to the tracking here, order header data, uh, breakdown of all the packaging, how it was packed out, the products and quantities that were shipped, breakdown of the freight charges, and then any special services that were used. Starship also has crystal reports built in, uh, so you can do some cost analysis, um, you know, late deliveries reports, so you can see on-time deliveries, any exceptions to that. You can you know, keep the carriers honest and submit a claim to get your money back on any of those shipments that are not arriving on time if you're paying for expedited freight. All of our data is in SQL, and there are views that are exposed if you want to query our database and extract what you need from an external application. Uh, we also have an export routine where we can dump all that information out to a flat file. Another front office utility we offer you is the rate quote utility. This is also another uh, tool that we give you so that you can you know, take a look at all the rates if you want to move that decision to the front office, anyone in the sales or customer service area could provide freight quotes in real time. Thanks for indulging us on the product demo. We're just gonna have a brief poll here we're gonna launch. If you can take a few minutes to answer that for us. Just give us a little bit of feedback on if you're interested in learning more about the LTL functionality in Starship. We can certainly set up a one-on-one -on -one demo. And next question here. 
you could just let us know if you are interested in using any of the 3PL services that we offer support for, or if there's another 3PL that you're currently using, let us know. And we're tracking enhancement requests to be considered for a future release. Okay, great. I appreciate everyone taking the time to answer or to answer the polls. Uh, we can open it up to any questions at this time. In the control panel for GoToWebinar, you have uh, the ability to log some questions there. Okay, it looks like we have a question coming in on how do you deal with customer routed freight? Uh, excellent question, thanks for asking. Um, Starship's going to look at the ship via code coming out of Macola. Uh, so if that's defined there, that's how it will default. Uh, you can also set up uh, collect or third party freights or links to um, your customer's broker or um, 3PL that they may be using. So any of that can be automated using the McCall integration. Okay, another question here. 30% uh, of our volume is done with our own trucks. Any functionality for internal fleet? Yes, thanks for asking. The internal fleet could be set up uh, same as a uh, outbound carrier for um, just adding the SCAT code and the name for the service. That could be used for will call pickups for any of your vendors that uh, need to come and pick up goods and send their own truck or uh, your own internal fleet. Um, the bill of lading number that we assign that's unique, that could be used as a way to track, or the pro number field is open if you wanted to assign a pro number uh, at the time that you're processing that. So really any type of uh, freight carriers that are not supported natively in Starship can be set up that way. There are also hosting options available through a TMS uh, that we're integrated to as well. So uh, in some cases we can set up uh, rating and tendering to automate that process as well. All right, looks like that is all the questions that we have received. So we'll go ahead and wrap up the webinar. I'd like to thank everyone for your time and attention today. Thanks, and have a great day.